Hey you guys, welcome to the last session. And I just wanted to uh, show you the final painting before I get started with this tutorial. And in this tutorial, we are going to wrap up this painting. Now your journey through this painting will probably be a lot different than mine because the fact that my masking went bad and I had to use other techniques to fix it uh, may be different than you. Your masking hopefully didn't go bad and you won't need to use the gouache and the gel pen as much as I had to. So just keep in mind that these video tutorials are merely guides and your painting is going to go on its own journey. It'll be its own separate painting. So do what you think is best. So if you don't think you need the gouache or you don't need the gel pen, keep it fresh as possible and don't use them. I decided that I want to add some gouache to some areas so I'm just going to zoom in so I'm using white gouache this is what some purist watercolorist consider cheating but actually you know what I think I'm gonna go in with my simply sims because this is such a small little area go in and get some of these details just the way I want them along the edge and I might regret this. I might wish that I would have just left well enough alone, but if I don't like it, I just won't add it to my tutorial. I actually darkened the background in this painting more than what I'm showing you guys, and I'm not showing it to you guys because I don't want you to do it. And I just think I, I may have overworked my background just a little bit. So I didn't share that part of my footage because I don't want you guys to do that. <laughs> I want you to have a nice fresh background and I think mine got a little overworked. I was trying to get it really dark and I'm, I'm doing these, I'm somewhat new to doing watercolor tutorials. So I think a lot of times what I'm doing is over overthinking some of my paintings and as my Patreon members know, I had a really hard time with the last landscape I did for my Patreon subscribers and I just wasn't happy with it and I just think I overworked it and I got in a little too deep, but I did learn a lot and that's how you learn as an artist is try new things that you're not comfortable with. So uh, I did go ahead and show that to my Patreon members because I wanted them to understand, you know, that not every painting is going to be a win. So I thought that was okay to share with my Patreon students. I'm not trying to come off as, hey, I know everything. I don't. So I think that's an actual valuable lesson to teach to my students is not only how to paint, but how to think about painting. And one of the ways you need to think about painting is uh, just accept the fact that you're going to make a lot of mistakes. If you're not making a lot of mistakes, then you're not approaching your painting correctly because you need to be learning and growing and there's growing pains associated with that process. So don't be afraid of having a few painful moments in your painting career or a lot of them actually. Um, that's how you learn. And that's the cool thing though, is a lot of times when you take chances with your art and do something big and bold and new and scary, it does pay off and that's really exciting. Some of my best paintings were so, so scary to create. I encourage you to go boldly towards your goals as an artist and just keep on trying. There's so much, I'm a, I've got a master's in social work, so I've got it. That's a pretty much a counseling degree. And we used to talk a lot about what makes an individual successful. And there's so much research on this. It's really interesting. And time and time again, what comes back as the most important thing to success as a human being is grit. It's something called grit. What is grit? It's where 
every time you fall down, you get back up and you try again and you don't give up. So please be that way with your painting too. Don't give up. And so as you can see, I'm using this gouache. I'm going in and I'm re-lightening up some of these areas. So I'm using just regular gouache. And uh, the only reason, like I said, that I'm using this gouache is because my masking didn't work very well. And I just wanted to refine some of the edges and just really brighten up this cat. I really wanted him to pop against that dark background. So I'm just going in and putting in little details. Now I'm going to wet the complete area of the haunches on the light side of the cat. And I'm just going to put a really light wash of ultramarine blue over some of the haunches just to kind of blend it just a tiny little bit with background, but more so to just kind of attach that area of the cat to the background. And also I just felt like there was almost too much white on the cat and it's confusing to the eye because I really want the eye to naturally travel to the cat's face. So I decided that I was going to add a light tea consistency wash of ultramarine blue with my Elvira Custom Net brush, which holds a lot of water and a little bit of paint. So it's good for painting that kind of area. And so uh, I just put random little bits of uh, splashes of ultramarine blue on the haunches of the cat just to kind of push them back in space. And it also helps pro uh, helps create a little bit of depth in the painting, I think. I also, you can see once in a while, I use my fingers to kind of move the paint around a little bit. And the effect is really subtle. Now, right now that blue, right now that blue looks really bright, but let me show you how it ended up looking. The fur textures are still pretty bright, but see that ultramarine blue, it looks really a lot brighter when it's wet. And now look at it. It's dried and it's just really subtle. There's still quite light areas on the haunches, but the haunches have been pushed back just a little bit in space and you can paint right over this edge. So you paint over with that light bit of ultramarine blue if you decide to do this in your painting, right into the edge of the painting, of the background, right over into the cat. And you can follow a little bit with that ultramarine blue down the darker stripes and keep some of the whites completely white. I did that a lot in my other painting so you can see right here, I really softened it and, and did a lot of paint over this area of the haunches. So there's just these little splashes of white area, which I think are very effective, especially this white area kind of leads you up to the face. I like how that worked out in this painting. So I also did the same thing in this painting by kind of um, calming down that white, white area on the haunches that's in the reference photo to be more artistically, aesthetically pleasing. Thank you guys so much again for going on this journey with me with this painting. It's had its highs and lows, and I would love to hear from you in your comments and also on my Rachel Parker Watercolor Workshop Shop Facebook page. I would love to hear from you uh, how this painting went for you if you also painted along. And that's also a place where you can share your progress on this painting or any other painting you want to share. It's um, a place where we all learn from each other and I also share when I'm doing a new video. So join me over there and you can share your progress. And next up, like I said, I'll be doing the three Siamese cats and there's a rooster coming up and a dog and I'm not sure what else I'll be doing. Oh, I'm doing a commission of uh, a wedding portrait in Scotland and that is almost done. I've taken footage of the entire process. So that will be on the horizon coming up in the next month or two. So a lot of good things coming up. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe. I try to publish a video twice a week, but definitely at least once a week. And so uh, I'd love to have you join my channel and I'll see you on my next painting adventure.